So um, thank you very much for coming this evening. I think, uh, as Hank mentioned, this is my second time talking about oil and gas. <coughs> um, this is my third talk um, in this uh, um, round that we are doing on behalf of SABA. I belong to SABA Action Body Advocating Rights. It's a trustee which was formed two years ago. And uh, <clears throat> we are sharing knowledge and uh, fighting for equality. And part of our ed educating the public is to know your rights. Okay. So <clears throat> today I'm pleased to present to uh, SABA Society members. Sorry about the date. <laughs> Too many long nights writing. <laughs> um, so today, <clears throat> I'm giving you the overview of the oil and gas business of Saba, the implications and future benefits. Um, actually, I was going to talk about the gas the rights uh, <clears throat> given to, to Saba, but I thought it's better to make you understand in the bigger picture if we talk about the oil and gas as a whole. And uh, <clears throat> so I've expanded the, the uh, topic a bit more for clarity. So why it's important for us to be informed about the oil and gas industry? So Sabah state is still dependent on oil and gas revenue. And approximately 50% of the state revenue comes from oil and gas. And uh, <clears throat> petroleum sales tax, which was imposed in 2018, um, Sorry, oh. into 2018 gave the state a reprieve actually, uh, an additional re revenue. Okay, with that, that I think uh, will be in, in a dire straits or so. So, oil and gas revenue has continued to influence the overall economic growth of Sabah state. Okay, now if you look at that chart here, 20, 2021 to 2023, and this is a state budget in billions. You can see it's almost 50% or more than 50%. So you have to be concerned about it because we all live in Sabah and we need to know where all the revenue comes from, apart from oil and gas and oil palm. Um, so you can see here, yeah, petroleum sales tax um, is now very important contributor to the state revenue. And the background to that, um, but, um, Sarawak government took Petronas to court in 2019. They won the first round of the case, and the judge agreed with them that Sabah Sarawak actually can impose the sales tax under the MA63 and the constitution. Um, <clears throat> the, Excuse. sorry. I just check with you. Yeah. The year 2021, yeah. the oil uh, royalty and cash payment, why so big? 911.0. Only that, that year. It's uh, okay. Um, less, less, than the, less than a billion. And the other one below is 1.2 billion. Yeah. All billion. Yeah. Oh, less, less billion. Oh. Yeah. So this, this figure fluctuates depending on the production volumes, the price of oil in the market and so many other factors, right? So when, when they announce the budget, it's always a forecast, okay? And then, and then the following year, they will confirm how much is the actual, okay? So, okay. So people always ask uh, how much we produce in terms of oil and gas. So this figure was uh, presented in uh, the workshop at APEC Workshop Tokyo by the Malaysian Energy Commission. And uh, if you can just, uh, this is a busy chart, but just look at the bottom. About 42% of oil produced in Sab is produced in Sabah. Peninsula Malaysia about 82% and Sarawak 26 But when it comes to gas, it's the opposite. Sarawak has more gas than Peninsula Malaysia and Sabah 13%. So Sabah has less gas, more oil. Okay. So this this is 
not, nothing really much. Uh, it's just how our, our rock band, you know, uh, delivers certain things for oil and gas. So, um, gas is to me a very valuable commodity for industrial purpose, and um, it's clean energy, and, uh, and that, that's why you know we need to focus more on gas. Okay, this I did this chart. I don't think nobody, anybody's got this chart, but on my own initiative, I'm sharing with you. This is my own chart. So, summer is mainly a transit point for oil and gas. Okay, it's sad. Okay, we we don't actually don't we don't even have the industry like Bintulu um, Gas and uh, Bintulu Development Authority with all the industries and all that. So, we pipe gas to from Kimanis to Bintulu through a pipeline about 520 kilometers, and then <clears throat> if you pass um, Kimanis, you will see flares. This is a Sabah Oil and Gas Terminal, SOGT, they call it. And um, uh, oil, oil and gas lands here, and then pipe to, to Bintulu, and some goes to Labuan, and some is processed for export. Now, there's also another floating platform, okay, offshore Sabah, and it's uh, PFLNG Dua, okay, it's named, the uh, vessel. And, uh, <clears throat> they operate in the Rotan gas field, very deep, um, about 140 km kilometers offshore. Now this is interesting. Okay? <laughs> they drill the oil, uh, and and this is processed on this vessel, and then other vessels come in and they take it and they export it. They don't have to come to shore. All right. So this is independent processing unit. All right. So there's nothing much we can gain. Okay. Last time they have crew change. The people come and stay in the hotel, eat the food and all that. Now, from Labuan, they can fly there and drop by helicopter and then all these things are exported, right? So there's not really any benefit for Sabah again. And then you get <coughs> Sabah oil and gas is processed in Labuan. As you know, Labuan is given to <laughs> federal, right? It's in the news every day. And uh, imagine how much loss in terms of taxes and all that, that uh, is gone through Lab One. Okay, for example, we can't collect uh, sales petroleum tax because it's federal territory with the land there. Now, if you recall a case, um, Ibiscus refused to pay the the, the taxes, and uh, Masidi threatened them like, okay, you you don't pay, we we'll stop the work permit. Okay, so they paid something like 80 over million back taxes. So um, um, this is the issue, like I said, about Labuan. I was asked by the hibiscus, one of the hibiscus director, I said, look, it's very simple to me. You want my opinion? What comes off the ground and transported is already a point of sale. Okay, it's uh, Sabah waters, okay? and. Whether it's uh, landed in Labuan or what, doesn't matter. It comes out of the ground, you already sold it to a third party. So you have to pay the taxes. Well, so finally they paid me after Pasidi threatened them. And you got the uh, <coughs> Samor, ammonia urea plant in Sapitang, wholly for export. Now we need, we need the ammonia urea to produce things like fertilizer. And uh, <coughs> last year, two years ago, our group were complaining some of them are agriculturists, agriculturists, and then they're saying, why is the price of fertilizer so high? <laughs> it's because we're importing everything. But, and and um, we, we are uh, subject to the, the price in the international market. So had we have our own uh, uh, ammonia urea plant, then we could go down the sea further, okay? In fact, we, when, during my time, we were working on it with Petronas, and it's in the news with Dato Raymond and all that, uh, but it never, it never materialized. And then we have Kampong Gayang, so if you pass on the way to seafood in Kampong Gayang, you will see some flares and all that. So uh, Petronas land some uh, gas in this area, some is supplied to KTIP, 
and <clears throat> Sabah Energy Corporation um, takes uh, gas now and uh, supplying to, to industrialists uh, and um, hotels and all that. Uh, but this is going to be a bigger, bigger vehicle in future. If you write the, the News Today front page, Sabah Energy Corporation has expanded the role and it will be a future vehicle for the state government. So, so this is a good indication of our oil and gas going out, and we're not benefiting much from it. Now. So this one question. Yeah. So this all, I think the, so few of us. Yeah. Just the other slide back. The other yeah. side. So of all these things, what is actually coming into Sabah? You know, all these seven things that. Uh, not know, it? I mean, I guess the Kimani's thing to do is not coming to Sabah, no. right? The uh, P the front Dua, mm -hmm. none of it is coming to Sabah. Mm -hmm. So Kimanis is coming to Sabah, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. The one in Labuan doesn't come, right? No. So we only have one, two, three. Mm -hmm. We got nothing basically, you know. Mm -hmm. So, so. On okay. so, well, your F, F L N G, right? Ah. Do, can you tax because you say nothing transact on Sabah side, it's all offshore. Yeah. The they farm, they do they still pay tax? Or they're they supposed, they're supposed to pay petroleum tax. Yeah. Sells, uh, petroleum sales tax, yes. Mm. In fact, Petronas is the biggest uh, the payer of the sales tax, petroleum sales tax. So. Okay. Yeah. 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 This, one, this one sales tax is quite straightforward. Like, it's about waters. So they, they pay, I think it's like 400 million last year mm -hmm. from Petronas. But we don't have the industry like Bintulu. So yeah. Sapitan doesn't have anything it, it, apart from the Samoa project, which is wholly owned by Petronas. And uh, we don't have a refinery. Lamuan has two methanol plants. So we got basically nothing to, to process on land. We don't really benefit. Kampong Gayang also is, is very small. All right, and um, there's no, no impact on no. this. So it's a sad story, isn't it? I mean, if, if, if I do the same for, for Bintulu, so I'll keep you see all kinds of uh, industries. And um, it's been going on for so long because we, um, the state leaders are not conversant about all these things and uh, never actually talked to Petronas about these things. But I, I did uh, during my time. To discuss, we opened Sogit Sapitan with the hope of uh, uh, attracting uh, investors to come. Okay, the Sabah is a paradox, huh? a rich state but poor. Huh? Petronas has contributed 1.2 trillion to federal government for national development since 1976. Overall, some 24.54 billion was paid to Strawa and 12.78 million to Sabah. Okay, <clears throat> and um, average about 1.16 billion for Sabah over a period of 11 years. You're talking about period of 11 years, huh? So the four oil producing states, including Sabah, has contributed much to national development than people realize, huh? as yet Sabah is the poorest state in Malaysia. So we have contributed a lot to national development. Uh, some people have claimed that Petronas Twin Towers uh, was our money, all right? And, um, is that a valid Yes, it is. It is a very clean. Uh, if you follow um, Trangano and, and Kelantan and all that, they got Wang He San. They don't have oil royalty. The federal government play around with them. Okay? They say, okay, this is the money, you know, and, but I control it. Okay, how you spend the money. All right? And they are oil producing state. Okay? Southern Sahak is the only one that they don't touch so much like, because of, you know. <laughs> They'll be in trouble. But Fernando and, and Klantan, uh, they're fooling around with them. And then um, Klantan has taken legal suit in the past. I think uh, for me, Thomas Time, there was a, a, a case. You know? So that's how the federal government treat the oil producing states now. In fact, it's in the news again that Menteri Basar is also complaining that, you know, you, know, you give us, you know, the money. What kind of money? Is it oil royalty or you know, some kind of handout? Yeah? 
So, okay, this chart is very interesting. Okay, so you see Petronas dividend from 217 to 2022, and the last one is 50 billion. Okay, so um, this does not include other taxes paid by Petronas and other oil companies operating in Malaysia. Okay, sometimes we see all oh, 50 billion. In fact, they're probably getting uh, like. Um, 150 billion from oil and gas, all right? Because there's petroleum tax, and all all companies pay different taxes and all that. Okay, and the petroleum dividend is not shared with the oil producing state, and Sabah gets the five percent uh, cash payment, and is not a shareholder of petroleum. Sometimes we talk about oil world here, yeah, David, but actually it's cash payment. You know, if you read the PDA, uh, but we generally we call it you know oil royalty, but in fact it's just 5% cash payment. 5% huh? of, of what? Of the volumes that they export from Sabah. And if you ask me the details, nobody they know. I, I've tried to ask the question. <laughs> because, you know, oil is not sold directly um, by Petronas. They go to traders. Oil companies go to traders. They don't. They don't actually sell oil. They produce it, you know. And uh, and some seller in Singapore who does the marketing and sell it. Okay. So um, it's not really oil royalty. Oil royalty, you know, is different from cash payment. You know? So basically, they say, okay, uh, this year I sold um, X amount of uh, volumes at US how many dollar? All right. And this is your, your your share cash payment. And if you want to ask more about transparency, they will not give it to you. This market uh, secret market uh, deals. Yeah. And um, it's sad, lah, you know, because we don't get anything. You know, um, yeah. this five percent cash payment is different from the sales tax. Right? Yeah, different. So you combine, we get about ten percent. Uh, yeah, the generally like 10%. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, but the sales tax is only recent, huh, yeah. over the yeah. last few years. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. Sarawak get 5%, I mean, the Sarawak also get 5%. Yes. Yeah. Everyone gets 5% of cash payment. Plus yeah. sales yeah. tax. Plus yeah. sales tax. No, no, this is cash payment. Yeah, right? cash payment. Yeah. It's a different thing. Yeah, based on volume. So, the sales tax is how many percent? 5%. Uh, five percent. Five percent. Should be 5 right? Yeah. So, why the figure is different? Yeah, just how just well, the clip you show just now, ah. the cash payment and the sales tax ah, collected. The first job, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's just, it's just um, divided into two. Lah. So we get the traditional yeah. uh, cash payment. All these years we've been getting that like 5%. Mm. And 218, we got an extra 5%. <coughs> okay, of, I mean, recent. Lah, you know. Right. So uh, combined together is about five million, uh, five billion, mm. right? How much do you think the state government should ask? No, no, no. About ten percent. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you talk about Pakatan Harapan time, uh -huh. two, two eighty. They say twenty. Twenty percent. Yeah. yeah. Which yeah. is quite impossible. Yeah. Well, it's possible. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> that's another story, lah. So now we come to the Devolution of Gas Supply Act to Sabah. Lah. Okay, it's quite recent. Okay, in December, uh, Anwar Ibrahim announced the Devolution of Gas Supply Act. Okay? And uh, Anwar said that Cabinet has agreed that regulatory power and Sabah gas supply will be transferred from Putrajaya. This is interesting. From Putrajaya to Petronas to the state government. So you've got three layers. Okay. Oh. <laughs> okay, <then. laughs> I'm getting my dates wrong. Yeah, 2022, sorry. Um, too many lawyers in the room. Pick up all things. Okay, there's no mention about oil resources. Huh? Oil and gas are closely related. So you're just talking about gas, not talking about oil. And we have to understand this. Like, that if it, People get excited reading this, like, wow, suddenly, you know, gas control. Uh, I mean, gas belongs to us, which is not true, okay? It's only the regulatory power transferred 
uh, Sarawak has, has already obtained it into 16 and become effective to 18. Okay, we we always few steps behind. Okay, and um, so after after getting that pass, our gong consent and all that, then the Sabah State uh, the the uh, State Assembly on January 10 passed the Sabah State Energy Commission Bill called ECOS and the Gas Supply Bill 223. And the ECOS we empowered to perform big function of the gas supply sector in Sabah so that all activities in the sector can be controlled and carried out effectively and efficiently. In the second phase, they take over the electric supply and renewable energy regulatory authority from the federal government, which is expected to take place in April this year. So again, I underline this is merely a regulatory exercise and not involving any transfer assets. Okay, it's just a regulation, right? And uh, transfer asset means no, the oil and gas belongs to you, which is not true. So people got excited. That's why I, it's important for for people like me to go around and explain. Okay, don't get excited. It's it's nothing. It's just a piece of paper. All right. Uh, and say that, okay, you know, we have regulation. Spark has passed so many of these regulations already. We just passed two. And um, this, this, this second one is quite interesting because yesterday headline, we have the biggest number of gensets in all of Malaysia. So you want to talk taking over SESB, <laughs> good luck to you. <laughs> right? So I just don't know why the state wants to take over, you know, uh, organization that which is really in a bad shape, yeah. right? And uh, it's, this is a World Bank statement, okay? It's not some some politician saying, okay? World, World Bank statistics saying that in Sabah we have the highest number of genset, okay? Which is telling you that, you know, we have power supply problem, right? And apart from uh, water, I mean, I have friends in Sulaka and was drinking salt water every day for past <laughs> Six, uh, six months or so, okay. Um, so, again, I have to emphasize that Petronas still hold exclusive ownership to oil and gas exploration and production projects in Malaysia, okay. This is what the, the, the politicians won't tell you, all right, or won't uh, make, make statement about it. Petronas holds stakes in most of oil natural blocks in Malaysia, and Petronas' financial contribution to the government revenue in the form of taxes, dividends, and cash payment comprise about 35% of total government revenue in 2019. And Malaysia credit rating is closely linked to Petronas and dependent on Petronas' strength and performance. It's, it's the only Fortune 500 company. So when, when we discuss this emotionally, I always like to point out this fact. You have a golden goose that's producing you 35% of revenue. And you think they want to give you the oil and gas right then? It's not, right? So when, when we discuss these issues, you have to think in this context. Right? And I'd like someone to think more. You know, when they ask for something, you have to look at the background of these things, okay? And whether it's realistic that you're asking, you know, that we take over all the oil and gas resources. You think they, 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 they want to give up? No. All right, so the, the reason I say this thing is for us to find some ways of getting back, you know, this revenue apart from, you know, um, going against the federal government uh, or, and, and disturbing the nest egg, you know, so to speak. So th this, this is, um, it's very important to understand, you know, that I, I studied these things, so, you know, the rating Malaysia rating is dependent on Petronas, okay? Because to the Western world, Petronas is the, I don't know, you know, the, the king of Malaysia in terms of corporate, corporate uh, body, right? So it's, you know, the Western world, they, they can only understand certain things related to Fortune 500 company. They, they don't care about how Sabah is poor, you know, and uh, how we deprive of income, you know, and that kind of thing. So, so even KL, when I talk to KL, uh, I belong to G25, and they will always say, oh, it's 
good for you all to share. You know, I mean, if we are whole Malaysia, you know, share, share. But share, share, fine. But why are we still poor? <laughs> How can a poor person share something? <laughs> so, okay, this is very important because every day, you know, the newspaper you talk about commercial collaboration agreement in short CCA. Just remember that now. So the state government and Petronas signed a commercial collaboration agreement under the chair of federal government. Okay, under the chair of federal government, federal government has control of everything. Okay. And the objective of this agreement is to increase the revenue for Sabah from oil and gas production in the state and to increase Sabah participation in oil and gas industry to the value chain. I'll uh, elaborate more about that. Now. So everything now comes under the CCA, which is an umbrella agreement. Okay. I tried to uh, call uh, Brandon Many times we fixed an appointment, it was cancelled and all that, but, uh, but I have some information, you know, but what are the plans? Uh, okay, this is interesting. Everything is related to MA63, you know. When uh, Hajiji makes a statement, everything is related to MA63. So like he says, the uh, CCA is a positive move forward for the state towards realizing Malaysia Agreement in 1963. Haji G all said, um, the state rights to continental shelf and the territorial act 212, which the state government still de de determined to reject, which limits suburb border to three nautical miles. Okay? Uh, this, this is another long story, but if you follow this continental shelf things and all that emergency law and all how they taken this uh, yeah, continental shelf, which is extend beyond these things, and uh, and uh, put it under their jurisdiction. In fact, the emergency law has been lifted already, but still, uh, you know, they're saying your boundary is three nautical miles now. So even Benedict also uh, said uh, effort to take over. The gas, electricity, and power sector was part of the realization Malaysia Agreement 1963, which the people of Sabah have, have long desired. I, I mean, I, I'm familiar with MA63 IGC report. I cannot find anything related to power and all that. So uh, <laughs> it's, it's interesting that they, they make this up as, as, as the goal. You know? I gave a, a talk at Bonio Forum recently, and I just said that. You know, what is MA63 today? You know, I mean, it's like shifting your goalposts all the time. Every new government comes, there's a new list of demands and all that. So I don't know when is MA63 going to end and, and say, okay, I'm satisfied that you've given me everything and okay, you can cross the chapter and move on, right? So um, every day they'll be talking about MA63, you know. And I'm getting tired of it. <laughs> Okay, um, so what, what actually happened after, after the, they passed the gas to you, um, the regulatory thing, Petronas signed an agreement for a supply of 130 million scar for gas, and Petronas gas business in Sabah, which consists of supply agreement to five independent powers, which is in Sabah, headed, headed over to Sabah Energy Corporation. Okay, so basically all the power plants uh, which Petronas supplied before, they, they said, okay, now nah, uh, you take over, <laughs> now nah, you deal with that. So if you in the right frame of mind, your business person is, okay, what is the margin for me for doing all that? Okay, I'm taking over also some not new pipelines and all that, right? Already depreciated and, and so on. So. You know, people get excited, wow, you know, now we become the biggest supplier, but actually this is Petronas and <laughs> this is the dirty work like you <laughs> take over. <laughs> no, because the uh, price is pre-intermediate, right, with all the I IPP. What I know is the, the government, the government pay a run-through cross to the IPP yeah. operator. It's right? subsidized, yeah, basically. Yeah. And yeah. Then the, the gas that supply was a pre-determined. 
price, so yeah. they might not even be profit. They yeah, but it, it, as far as I know, like, then it's not mm -hmm. fixed, like, it still fluctuates, like, oh. depending on the price and the subsidy from the government. Actually, a lot of subsidy involved in it. Like. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> um, but all I'm saying is that here I'm Sabah Energy Corporation, you hand over this to me. How much am I making? Yep. Yeah. All right? Yep. Yeah. Is it a viable business at the end of the day? I might be taking on a, an elephant, you know, and, and not being able to, to survive, right? So, you know, you come from this sector, you understand, you know, the intricacies of it. And, but for political power, oh, now we're taking over the gas, gas supply business, okay? Maybe Petora say, oh, thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. So, um, with the bigger customer base and control of infrastructure, Sabah Energy Corporation is uh, grow its business in Sabah. So today's newspaper, if you read front headlines, it's about Sabah Energy Corporation plans and takeover in Petronas, okay? So that's why you have, you have to understand it because these are headline news now, right? So in, in contrast, Sarawak has secured 1,200 million million scarf to support the implementation of Sarawak gas roadmap. So what we got from Petronas is very small compared to what Sarawak has. Uh, uh, yeah. So, so this figure is like how many times more? Uh, ten, 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 ten times more. So, um, Sawak is very good negotiators, okay, and they have a plan for the industries there. They have more gas. Well, it doesn't mean that you have more gas, that you, you entitled for more gas, right? Because gas, you're talking the whole of Malaysia, right? So, gas can be supplied anywhere, okay? But the, the most important message for me is that you got to know what industries you want, okay, and demand the gas accordingly. All right, you cannot just let allow Petronas to get hand over the five MPP to you, and, and uh, that's it, and you enjoy some kind of business. Right? We have not been able to tell them. In my time, we have told them. You know, we want the second ammonia urea plant. Mm -hmm. yeah. We got to go to the chemical uh, derivatives. I don't see that happening like, at the moment. So these are all the. Things announced, lah. Okay, the MOUs, MOU are MOUs, right? Then I, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> but this is uh, um, some excitement, lah. Silicon, silicon metal plant, green diesel plant, and so on. Lah. Okay, I don't know, but green steel plant, lah. And I, I've been talking to a lot of uh, steel people. So I still don't know what green steel plant is the, the biggest polluters in the world. And, uh, but this is interesting, taking 25% equity in Project Samoa, which uh, is in Sepitan belonging to Petrona. In fact, this, this is a old story, like 217 and all that. They actually offered to us, okay? We never took it up, okay? So they offered 10% in the LNG 9, train 9. I don't know whether we took it up, okay? So when, when, when you, you know, Hajiji is so excited, oh, we can take, this was already offered to you in 2017. Okay, even Musa announced it in State Assembly, but we never took it up. So when you take it up now, you know, it's a going concern, right? Petronas has already established its plan, been operating, probably making money and all that. So you want to come in 25%? Yeah, okay, you pay this price now. It's not like you were a partner from the beginning, all right? That's why you have to question all these things. You know, the previous price when they started and the going in price now, okay? And um, Petronas announced they do the ZLNG. Basically, it's a LNG plant now floating again, just like the, the FLNG Dua. Okay, so what's interesting is they're going to expand this LNG virtual pipeline system in Sabah, especially East Coast region. You know? 
So that's to me is a good sign if, if they can do that, pipe gas to the East Coast because they're lacking in power and so on. And there's been a lot of talk about helping uh, the East Coast for many, many years, okay? Especially in Bahadato, we, we actually plan for the regasification terminal and then when the Sulu people invaded, Petronas decided to abort the project like that. The study has been done, okay? So, um, and then if you recall the story, how Chinese contractors uh, were supposed to be a pipeline from, from Kimanis to uh, East Coast, Sunakan, and then somebody siphoned 90% of the money. <laughs> and um, so, I don't know how, the, how this thing is going to pan out. It's going to be a big project. Um, but it's exciting to me in a sense, if you can supply this to uh, East Coast, it would help uh, East Coast grow. Yeah. Okay. When is this? Hmm? I mean, it's a bit time. This, this is yeah. Sipitan. So yeah. the gas is coming from offshore into Sipitan. Yeah. Okay, yeah. We're going to pipe this from Sipitan to East Coast. Yeah. yeah. So I think some of the gas landing in Labuan will be diverted to, to this now. Mm -hmm. And um, strategic questions we should ask now, you know, as Sabahan, uh, okay, things are looking up uh, for us. I mean, every day, IGG is, uh, you know, signing agreement, making, you know, the government looks good and all that. Um, but what we should question is, uh, oil and gas is a capital in intensive industry with high risk. Uh, I was uh, talking to Shafi the other day, um, at a meeting in his house, so I said, can the Sabah government buy these things? I said, what is the uh, reserve that we have? He didn't answer me directly. He said, oh, we kept the money in this bank, that bank, that bank. But he didn't tell me the total. <laughs> and um, my concern is how much of that reserve is going to be used up for these projects. Okay. Uh, it's, it's, uh, we should question it, you know, because you know, that reserve is the state reserve, you know, and we want the money to be spent wisely. You know. And um, have the state done the risk assessment? You see, when, you, when you go in oil and gas, the first thing you want to do is the risk assessment. Okay? That's what we do rigorously. Okay? Uh, example, Exxon Valdez, where I, I, a company I work for, we um, Exxon Mobil, sorry. We, we, uh, Exxon Valdez, the, f the famous ship, hit the Alaskan Sound and then spilled so much oil. And we had to actually literally take the rock one by one, wipe off the oil and all that. And today we are still paying the fishermen for loss of income. And, all. and then uh, the recent one, don't, don't forget, the BP Gulf of Mexico, a huge oil spill. BP nearly went bankrupt. Yeah. SO nearly went bankrupt also. Okay, so imagine uh, you, you take a certain percentage in a block, oil spill, and then you have to mop up. Okay, so these are the f kind of things, the scenario, if you're an oil and gas company, you, you, you do this, you know, and then you say, okay, fine, this is a risk, I'll still go in now, mm. you know, right? And uh, what is the expected return to the state based on targeted oil price? You know, I, oil price fluctuate, you know, US dollar and all that. So what is the target? Because, you know, I, I've been in the industry where twice we dropped to like 12, 12 uh, US per barrel. So this, um, some of the factors within the industry, you question that. And what is the state appetite for such ventures? At the moment, it looks like they have a hefty appetite. Like every day they're signing some agreement and all that. Um, and um, how do you manage political ventures as compared to commercial ventures? Political ventures, MA63, now we're taking back our rights, you know. We in control of oil and gas, right? That's political venture. Lah. But, you know, when you talk about commercial venture, is it, you know, what's the risk? How much I'm going to make? All right? Is, is the people going to benefit? You know, I mean, the Saban going to benefit. And uh, so, you have to temper political rhetoric with the reality on the ground. You know? 
But then I say, oh, I still control. <laughs> I still own the thing. <laughs> you can wham, wham, but uh, I'm still, the oil belongs to me, right? So in this new ventures, what are the for the people of Sabah who will be accountable? Okay? So these are questions which you'll ask, you know, because the state is moving ahead and um, I was informed that these people, you know, uh, some of them in the industry are not oil expert, you know, the political appointees with no um, oil and gas background. That concerns me. You know. um, upstream, they're being uh, advised by some uh, big corporate oil and gas people. They are upstreamers. Okay, I I I like to see more downstream, low risk uh, thing like you know, uh, plants, um, chemical derivatives because. Going upstream is, is high risk, and that's what yes. that's what Petronas wants, uh, for yeah. Instead of giving you the extra ten percent or what, they say, hey, okay, look, you join me in a block, okay, and we share the risk, uh, yeah. you know, and um, we should not be proud of it, you know. I mean, it's a risk. You have to do a risk assessment, okay, like anybody, and um, it's a harder way than asking for oil royalty, okay, and then people ask, hey, you know, the MS63 activists say, hey, the one belongs to us, why, uh, why am I going in uh, exploring and uh, trying to extract oil? Because it belongs to me, right? So, you, you extract it, but you pay me, you know, because the oil and gas resources belongs to me. So there are a lot of arguments. Lah. Okay, key takeaways, um, need political stability to create the investors' confidence. Be smart negotiators, know what you want. I mean, Petros will tell you what they want. But you must know what you want also. You want to create industries with jobs, all right? When, when you have an industry also, people always remember, people always say, wow, 5,000 jobs, 10,000 jobs. In today's automation, like the Kimani's power plant I built, we only have 50 technicians, okay, and they work on shifts, all right? So they didn't create 300 jobs, okay? Even all the plants or so now is fully automated. Uh, so <clears throat> is job creation-wise, not much left, okay? I mean, there are jobs created, okay? There are some industries, maybe in KKIP now, there, the Korean, uh, they need more labor and all that. But the oil and gas industry, we try to cut costs everywhere. Yeah. Right? And um, you need to state your strategic goals and roadmap, okay? Sawak is, you know, they have very um, detailed roadmap we don't have. Uh, we just say MA63, that's it. You know, I don't know what it means. Uh, be quick to enact the three powers. We only got two so far. Sawak has about 10, I checked. Mm -hmm. right? And um, they are the Ministry of uh, uh, Resources, Natural Resources. Uh, we don't have a ministry, but Sawak pocket and uh, one of the ministry. Uh, oh. uh, yeah. And uh, have vehicle ready. Uh, manned by professionals to monetize the gas distribution. Here's the interesting, uh, you know, if you recall, we have Sabah International Petroleum. If you ask, Google it, nobody knows. I keep asking, nobody knows. <laughs> Vincent Pung was the Rotary function, and if you ask it point blank, he doesn't want to comment, okay? Because he's on the Sabah Development Bank, the loan was taken as a loan bank, okay? So, we don't know. Suddenly, there's a new vehicle which is uh, Sabah Maju Jaya Sindhyan Bahad, okay? SMJ. Then now we've got Sabah Energy Corporation, which has been there quite a long while. I think they deserve it. Uh. But SMJ, what is it? I mean, is it a shell, money-making company? I don't know. And it's important to secure long-term long -term gas supply from Petronas. Uh. That is a critical part that you want, you know, you get as much gas as possible at a very good price so that you can create industries, okay? Because industries, they love gas, okay? And um, if you can get cheap gas, people will come. 
uh, participate in upstream activities through PSC, which is being done. I'll, I'll explain that a bit later. La. Provide the necessary infrastructure. I mean, you don't get headlines like, you know, from the World Bank that, you know, we had the highest number of gen set <laughs> so, so, and then uh, our friends in Sanakan drinking salt water every day. So, uh, we are not building new infrastructure. We are repairing infrastructure. So whatever we, we the money we get, we just maintaining and repairing, right? Changing pumps or whatever. But we're not building new infrastructure, okay? I go up to Mount Kinabalu quite often. The road is really terrible, okay? And uh, critical to start the trust fund, okay? This is what I've been saying all the time. You get all these grants, you know, 260 million, and you're so proud of it, you know. You get oil and gas revenue left and right. But based on the Waterworks uh, <laughs> case, where does the money go to? Right? It took into somebody's pocket. So I mentioned this also, the 50 million uh, jurisdiction now. Oh, they say, okay, under 50 million project, JK project, you can do. How much of the 50 million, sorry to say, you go to somebody's pocket, or how much is actually going to building roads and infrastructure. But Masidi did mention quite recently, you know, about setting up a trust fund. But when I check, you know, you, know, you, you always do your research. There is a trust fund, 1964, I think. And there's more than one trust fund. One is the education fund they created recently. Uh, a few years ago, but this one 1964. So I don't know what they're talking about because you know this this 260 million or what should be parked into the trust fund and disbursed to the projects that we identify. Like, you know? And it's very important to do that because you know Norwegian trust fund is uh, uh, very successful, and, and uh, Singapore Temasek uh, trust fund. Uh, it's very successful. I think we, I mean, we have to be serious, like, you know, in view of the Water, Watergate uh, scandal. We, you know, the, this is our last chance, okay? You talk about MA63. Now the government say, okay, okay, I'll give you the funds, you know, all right. But if the funds are going to go to somebody's pocket, then it's sad, okay? I don't know who's there and all that, you know. Um, so they signed a LOU, Petrochari Gali. This is interesting. La. So they have offered a block up to 20% uh, of this. Okay. This is interesting actually. The Petronas said, okay, we will drill and all that. You don't have to pay anything. Uh, but later on, we reserve 20% for you. You can come in and, and pay your share. And then. Uh, you know, you, you become a, a block owner. But when you think about it, you're in business now, huh? then you know, when, when you come in later, when they already well, discover... They taking money from... Huh? Uh, they want the drilling, the, the exploration, right? That is a very high risk. Yeah, so but, they, but this one is interesting in a sense. Yeah, they are proud, they don't have to do anything, mm -hmm. right? But they thought when, when we hit oil, Will you can so come you in can and, and buy it by cent? Yeah. Right. Buy two hundred percent of yeah. us. Yes. So which will be at yeah. a different price. At a different price. Of course. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So if you look at the success rate uh, in Malaysia uh, with yeah. petrol gas, uh, yeah, yeah, the success rate is sixty percent. Mm. And to yeah. rent a rig now is uh, half a million US per day. Yeah. Okay. So. If you total the bill by the time they, if they discover or don't discover, say drill ten hole, and they only get six. one or six or whatever, six. then they, they still have to pay for the for the once they drill, right? Because part of the cost. Yeah. Yeah. So not really. Uh, I don't quite understand this one. You know, it looks exciting. They, it looks like right. It I mean, the like government. A scam. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so that's why I want to educate you all to think and question because, sorry. It's a back-end option. 
Back in. Yeah. Ah, back in, yeah. Okay, I, I have to do my own research. <laughs> Basically, is the front end is, is what they're doing now. So you come in the back after... After they just So the price is different with a lot of costs. Yes, yeah, of course. Yeah. That means the share price has gone up already so much. Yes. So you want that. This yes. price, yeah. right? And plus, you, plus you have to pay for yeah. all the drilling costs of the thing that you, know, that you don't discover, right? In the process. So you maybe have to drill, drill 10 holes and um, 6 are 0. And you have to pay for that, right? Okay, so I'm, I'm questioning this line, you know, I mean, kind of, I mean, they will say it's a good deal. I don't have to pay anything up front, yes. But when you come in, just like Project Samoa at a later date, mm -hmm. you have to pay a premium price, right? Okay? And then, furthermore, Petronas will say, okay, this is my cost. Yep. You, you, you have open book policy, you can, you're not an expert, right? You, you're just following. Huh? They, and then... They are not the one who do the drilling, it's like ExxonMobil. No, I mean, Chari Gali, Chari Gali, they're part of it. No, I mean, Petronas now have a competent uh, drilling team. Okay? Mm. But it depends, in a block, there can be three or four yes. layers. Mm. So, like if Shell decide, okay, I will, I will take, I will control all the exploration production, mm. right? So the others just get the, the share, right? So normally there's one lead in a PAC agreement. And the, the second one is uh, heads of agreement for this uh, block, and then it's 50% participation interest in the Samarang field, uh, located 50, 50 kilometers offshore. This one's already existing, okay? And um, how much is the 50% again? Okay. I mean, I would like to know, right? Because this is our money, taxpayers' money. You know, what are the risk factors also going in? But maybe this one is a less risk, lah, but the, the question again, what is the price you're going in for? You know, I mean, and uh, to me, um, to me, all these things is appeasement, lah, you know. Petronas realized, okay, we're angry, we're upset. Okay, I'll give you the cost. I mean, you think, you think Petronas is so generous to give you, you know, all these things? You know, these are maybe the blocks that is not really significant for them, lah, you know. All right, so they say, okay, you know. We give you this. So, Hajiji, being an expert and all, guess that will get excited you know, and relate that to MA63. Uh, so, the CCA does, does open new opportunities for new investment uh, and um, shows Petronas and Federal Government all out to peace, Sabal Strong, as I mentioned. So, Danny, you want to revive your authenticity? <laughs> It's time to go in. <laughs> Despite that, MSC 63 sentiment is still strong. Okay? Strong in a sense, we won the, the oil and gas. Belongs to us, belongs to Saba, not Petronas. Eh? The sentiment is still strong. Eh? Okay? And putting aside the argument, or the continental shelf, shelf belongs to Saba, building oil and gas resources, this gives us some opportunities eh, to, uh, to come in. Some, you know. So, um, it's, it's, as the days go by, we'll, we'll know like, how much is this translate into revenue for us and opportunities for us. Like, at the moment, they have vehicle, SMJ, they have Saba Energy Corporation, mm -hmm. and so yeah. on. Like, I see the Haristan uh, Form uh, Association went to see SMJ recently, came out newspaper. So I don't know um, what's going on. Okay, it's not what you have, it's what you do with it, okay? So it's always that, you know, where Sarawak is, uh, live to serve always, and Sabah is, yeah. why, 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 why bother all these things? Okay, so I end my, my talk there. So I hope you, uh, you have better brief of the oil and gas industry. So alas, uh, I mean, if there's any questions, uh, go on the floor.